We're going to talk about an alternate area using the A form for the D chord for your home bass. And the only difference here is we're going to get rid of that pesky E minor from the previous lesson and use a more traditional A minor form. So if you go ahead and look at uh, example seven, you'll see you have the E minor with your A minor form. Then the other two chords are the same. Now see that fingering? That's another D chord fingering you could use. I've got my first and second fingers covering the root and fifth. And then I use my third finger for the fourth and third strings, my fourth finger for the second string. Now that one doesn't allow you to do much else you know, it can't even get a sus4 real well. So that's just something if I knew I just needed to grab a D chord, but I needed the A on top, that would work. And it's nice to be able to expand on the voicings you already know. We all know these, and we're comfortable with them, but we're always limited because what can you do? You can't really go up above that three and stay in the triad. So these fingerings are beneficial for that. All right, so there you have, in example seven, the other voicings. And then if you look at diagrams 10, 11, and 12, you will see that you have the arpeggios plotted out in red, but we've advanced up to fifth position. Remember that in the previous example or lesson, we were in fourth position. We had that first finger extension. So now we're in the fifth position, and there are a couple different ways you could finger this. I think you should start off just staying strictly in fifth position and then use a fourth finger extension. So look at example, um, example 8. You have the D major scale, two places to play the E, and you're hearing it as A mixed Lydian Y because we started on A. See what I just did. I held the A7 bar chord, freed up my little finger to play all the scale. The same thing would apply when you play the E minor. You can see that coming right out of diagram 10. But what that does, it gives you, you know, it sort of splits it out. If you were playing the E minor like this, then you'd have your first finger free. So this is why this is an alternate position. Now, I'm not going to go off and play a lot of different things. All this allows you to do is play some different inversions because before, when you had the D chord like this, it wasn't very practical to try to get the F sharp in the bass. So this way you have... Before, you had... just play some different things in there. And it also allows you to get notes ringing together in a different manner. Um, it's especially effective on the two chords. Let's go back here and look at our two chord. And I want you to play your scale. Then you can do things like... You see what you can do? You can hold... You've got all this stuff available where you just hold a bass note, you finger pick, things like that. And don't just think of it as finger picking. You can do it with a pick, do a lot of cool things. All right, so I'm just skimming over this because it's just another area, or actually just a variation of the same general forms. And uh, you might put these two together. Not might, you should. You should put them together so you see the... One thing I do want to point out, <coughs> excuse me, we've been dealing with these big block voicings. They're weighty, they're technically demanding, and they're dense. So, we're dealing with triads. I encourage you to go back and find three-note open voicings, and here's what I mean. Let's say, for example, I'm playing this E minor chord. If you look at diagram 10, you will see that you have root, fifth, root, flat, third, fifth, right? Okay, all you need is a root, flat, third, and fifth. So I want you to just finger the fifth string, the fourth string, and the second string. This would form the bass. That establishes my triad, it leaves it open enough that I can play a little melody line, a counter thing, and it's not clouded. It's also technically less demanding and it frees up a finger. And then when I go to my one chord,
So find these open voicings. All you gotta do is find a root third and a fifth, or it's minor, root flat third and fifth. And what I do there, I go sus four. Because if I've got a, a major chord, or even a minor, works better. It's not these big cumbersome voicings, they sound better, and especially if you're playing finger style. And I'm doing the same thing in these other areas, you see. Open voicings that aren't dense with adjacent strings ringing all the time. 